I'm Lila. My life was straightforward, just work and home. I worked as a web designer, and my days were filled with coding, designing, and client meetings, all from the comfort of my home. I was good at what I did, and it showed in my bank balance. It wasn't always like this. A year ago, my life was a mess after a horrible breakup. I had sworn off relationships, focusing only on work. But then, I met Ethan at a friend's party. Ethan came up to me with a simple, Hi, I'm Ethan. You're Lila, right? His voice was calm and steady. No airs, no pretense. Yes, that's me, I replied, taking in his casual attire and easygoing smile. We talked about everything that evening, from movies to our hobbies. He mentioned he worked in sales and seemed to enjoy his job. You must love what you do, he commented after I explained my work. I do, I smiled. It's more than just a job for me. He nodded, and we continued chatting for what felt like hours. By the end of the evening, we had exchanged numbers. It wasn't long before our casual chats turned into dates, and our dates turned into serious discussions about our future together. Ethan was different from the men I'd known. He was kind, attentive, and seemed genuinely interested in my life. I remember our third date distinctly. We were sitting in a small cafe, and he handed me a bouquet of flowers. For you, he said simply. Oh, Ethan, they're lovely, I replied, taken aback by the gesture. I thought they'd make you smile, he grinned. We dated for a few months, and everything felt perfect. So when Ethan proposed, I didn't hesitate. We had a simple wedding and moved in together. My house, spacious and filled with the memories of my single life, now echoed with our shared laughter. However, things took a turn when Ethan came home one day looking distressed. I lost my job, Lila, he began, avoiding my gaze. I was stunned, but tried to be understanding. It's okay, Ethan, we'll manage. You'll find another job soon. He looked relieved. Thank you for understanding. I promise I'll make this right. I believed him, truly I did. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, with Ethan not working and his job interviews leading nowhere, my patience began to wear thin. As the days went by, my trust in Ethan waned, replaced by an unsettling anxiety. Our financial situation was still stable thanks to my job, but Ethan's attitude towards employment became increasingly lackadaisical. One evening, I overheard him talking on the phone. Yes, mom, I'm taking care of everything. Lila's just doing her little web designing thing, but I'm handling the big stuff. That conversation irked me. Was he implying that he was the primary earner? A week later, his sister Elsie dropped by for a visit. She and I never really got along. Our beliefs and lifestyles were polar opposites. She had chosen a life completely centered around her home and husband, a choice I respected but couldn't understand. The moment she walked in, she started inspecting the place. Lila, don't you ever dust around here? She commented, running her finger along a shelf. We've both been busy, Elsie, I said, trying to remain calm. She smirked. Well, maybe if you focused less on work and more on your home. Elsie, Lila's doing a lot, okay? You don't need to come here and criticize. Ethan quickly interjected, trying to mediate. Elsie raised an eyebrow. Oh, I know you're taking care of everything, Ethan. I just feel bad you married someone who can't even keep a house tidy. I was fuming. Elsie, it's not just my job to keep the house clean. Ethan lives here too. Ethan glanced at me, then at his sister, a silent plea in his eyes. Let's not discuss this here, he said softly. Elsie smirked. Of course, wouldn't want to make things uncomfortable. But remember, Ethan, a man's role is to provide. I was left seething as Elsie sauntered out, leaving a trail of tension in her wake. Later that evening, I tried talking to Ethan. Why does Elsie think you're the main provider? Why is she under the impression that I'm just sitting around doing nothing? Ethan looked uncomfortable. Look, Lila, I might have mentioned to her that I'm handling a lot of things. I didn't want her or mom thinking less of me because I'm not working. That doesn't give you the right to belittle my contribution, Ethan. We're supposed to be a team, I replied, frustration evident in my voice. Ethan sighed. I'm sorry, Lila. I'll clear things up with Elsie and mom. Please give me some time. The days that followed were full of tension. Every morning, as I settled into my home office, the same nagging thought kept bothering me. Was Ethan being truthful? 
How much more was he keeping from me? It was one evening, as I sat down to pay some bills, that I noticed something off. A hefty amount had been transferred monthly from our joint account to an unfamiliar one. Curiosity piqued, I decided to dig deeper. I approached Ethan as he lounged on the couch. Hey, I noticed some transfers from our account. Do you know anything about it? Ethan looked up, startled. Oh, uh, yeah, that's just some money I've been sending to mom to help her out. I raised an eyebrow. Help her out? With what? And why didn't you tell me? He hesitated. Well, she has some expenses, and since I'm not working, I thought I'd support her with our savings. I was taken aback. Ethan, that's our money. We should be discussing these things together. It's a considerable amount. Ethan looked away. I didn't think it was a big deal, Lila. She's family. Frustration bubbled up. But so am I. Why didn't you talk to me about this? I just, I didn't want you to worry, he muttered. My voice began to tremble with anger. Ethan, keeping secrets, especially about money, isn't right. We made a commitment to each other. This isn't how it's supposed to work. He sighed. I know, Lila, I just, I didn't want to feel useless. I wanted to at least do something for my family since I can't for ours right now. I looked at him, tears in my eyes. But you are doing something. You're sharing your life with me. We need trust and transparency. Without that, what do we have? Ethan lowered his gaze. I'm sorry, Lila. I messed up. I took a deep breath. We need to fix this, Ethan, starting with being honest about everything. He nodded, looking genuinely remorseful. I promise, no more secrets. But as the night wore on and I lay in bed, I couldn't shake off the feeling of betrayal. In the wake of our last conversation, things felt even more strained between Ethan and me. Though he promised transparency, my own curiosity led me on a path to uncover the depth of his deception. One evening, as Ethan went out under the guise of another job seminar, I decided to do a little detective work. Going through our financial statements, I traced back every transaction to his mother's account. The sums were large, far more than one would need for general assistance. I picked up my phone and called my friend Jane, who worked at a bank. Hey Jane, I need a favor, I began, hesitating. Can you help me look into an account? I think something's off. There was a pause on the other line before Jane replied, Lila, you know that's not exactly legal. I know, but I'm desperate, I admitted. I promise, I won't get you in trouble. After hearing my story, Jane hesitated for a moment and then said, Okay, send me the account number. I'll see what I can do. A day later, she called me back with information that confirmed my suspicions. Lila, Jane began, her voice low, the money Ethan's sending to his mother? It's not just sitting there. It's being funneled into an investment account, and the amounts are substantial. My heart sank. Investment account? Yes, and the worst part is, it's under both his mother's and his name. I was speechless. Not only was he giving away our savings, but he was also making investments without informing me. Jane, thank you, I managed, my voice breaking. I'm so sorry, Lila, she replied. I sat in our living room, the weight of betrayal pressing down on me. How could he? When Ethan returned later that evening, I confronted him, papers scattered all over our coffee table. Ethan, we need to talk. He took one look at the bank statements and paled. Lila? Why, Ethan, why did you lie to me? I demanded. Ethan swallowed hard. I... Mom convinced me it was a good investment. She said we'd double our money in no time. I thought I was doing it for us. But it's our money, Ethan, I exclaimed. You can't make decisions like this on your own. We're supposed to be partners. He sat down, defeated. I know. I messed up. I thought I could surprise you, show you I was contributing. I shook my head, tears streaming down my face. By lying? By betraying my trust? Ethan looked away, guilt evident in his eyes. I'm sorry, Lila. I should have talked to you. The truth was out, but the damage was done. Could our relationship withstand the strain of so many lies? The atmosphere in the house was as cold and quiet as a winter morning. After uncovering Ethan's deceit, 
I was determined to keep my composure, but I found myself rattled whenever I remembered the mistruths. Ethan, on the other hand, seemed to be avoiding the topic entirely. Just as I sat down at my computer, the front door burst open. Before I could react, Lydia, Ethan's mother, and Elsie stormed into the living room. You shameless woman! Lydia's voice cut through the air. All you do is sit on your behind and suck the life out of my son. Elsie chimed in with a smirk. Always knew you were a leech, just waiting to latch onto someone better off. I took a deep breath, gathering my thoughts before replying. I'm the one working and earning here. Ethan hasn't been for months. Ethan stood off to the side, his eyes darting between us. I hoped, expected, that he would say something, defend me. But he remained silent. Lydia, her face red with rage, took a step forward. You expect us to believe that? My son has been the one supporting this family. You've just been enjoying his hard work. Elsie nodded in agreement. Honestly, I don't know what he saw in you. You're just a lazy housewife, living off someone else's money. Their words were like salt on an open wound. But more painful than their false accusations was Ethan's silence. He just stood there, watching the scene unfold without uttering a word in my defense. Taking a deep breath, I stood tall and looked straight into Lydia's eyes. All I ask is for the money Ethan transferred to you, returned. It's rightfully ours, not just his. Lydia's face twisted in rage. How dare you? That's my son's money, and I'll decide what to do with it. Despite the fury in her eyes, I didn't waver. It's our money, Lydia. Earned by me, not him. She stared at me for a moment, the room silent except for our heavy breathing. Then, with a huff, she turned on her heel, Elsie following close behind. This isn't over, Lydia spat as she stormed out of the house. The door slammed shut behind them, leaving a lingering echo. I turned to Ethan, waiting for him to say something, anything. But he just looked down, avoiding my gaze. The gravity of the situation weighed heavily on me. Not only was there deceit about money, but I was also fighting a battle with his family on my own. His silence hurt more than any deceit ever could. A few days after the confrontation, I sat in my home office, distracted by everything that had occurred. The tranquility of my workspace, usually a haven for creativity, now felt stifling. Taking a sip from my coffee, I pondered on how to reclaim my dignity and pride. The first step was clear. I accessed my online bank, scrutinizing every transaction, noting down each suspicious transfer. The amount Ethan had funneled to his mother was staggering. Money I had earned with sweat and sleepless nights, taken without my knowledge. A message pinged on my computer. It was from Lucy, a friend since college, and also a brilliant lawyer. I had confided in her about the whole situation, and she was eager to help. Hey, I've looked into your situation. Let's meet for lunch? Her message read. We met at a quiet bistro, away from prying eyes. So, Lucy began, stirring her iced tea. I've been doing some digging, and I think we have a solid case here. It's about time we put Ethan and his family in their place. I nodded, taking a deep breath. I just want what's rightfully mine, Lucy. I can't let them get away with this. Lucy's eyes gleamed with determination. Trust me, they won't. Weeks turned into a whirlwind of paperwork, meetings, and strategy sessions. Lucy and I, along with a team she'd put together, found evidence not only of Ethan's deceit, but also questionable transactions involving Lydia's accounts. It was a spider web of lies and deceit, with Ethan and Lydia at its center. One evening, after another exhaustive session, Lucy looked at me and said, It's time. Let's serve them the papers. The next morning, Lucy and I drove to Lydia's place. Ethan's car was parked outside. Perfect. We rang the bell, and Elsie answered, her face a mask of fake surprise. Oh, it's you, she sneered. We're not here for games, I said coldly. Is Ethan here? Before Elsie could reply, Ethan emerged from the living room. His confident smirk vanished as Lucy handed him an envelope. You're being sued, she said crisply. For fraud and theft, I'd advise you to get a lawyer. His face paled. This is ridiculous, he exclaimed. No, what's ridiculous is you stealing from your wife and lying about it, I retorted. Lydia appeared at the door, 
her eyes scanning the scene. What's going on here? You might want to read this too, Lucy said, handing her another envelope. As Lydia read the documents, her face went from smug to horrified. You can't do this. I stood tall, all the pain and humiliation fueling my resolve. I can, and I am. See you in court. Walking away from that house, with Lucy by my side, I felt a weight lifted. It wasn't about revenge. It was about justice. It was about standing up for myself when others tried to push me down. It was about reclaiming my power. And it was served cold. As the days drew closer to our court date, I braced myself for the inevitable backlash. I knew Lydia and Ethan wouldn't go down without a fight. And while I was emotionally ready, I didn't expect them to bring the battle right to my doorstep. It was a chilly evening when my doorbell rang. Peering through the peephole, I saw them, Lydia, Elsie, and Ethan, their faces a cocktail of anger and determination. Taking a deep breath, I opened the door. Thought you'd ambush us with that lawsuit, did you? Lydia spat out, taking a step inside. Ethan and Elsie trailed behind her, blocking the exit. Calm down, Lydia. This isn't a good look for you, I replied evenly. You think you can just humiliate us in public? Drag our name through the mud? Elsie snapped, her voice dripping with contempt. It's simple, I replied coolly. Return the money, and this ends. Ethan, who had been silent till now, looked at me with a mix of frustration and sadness. Is this how you want things to end? By suing your own family? Family? I echoed, my voice icy. A family doesn't steal from each other. A family doesn't lie and degrade one another. He sighed. I made a mistake, but taking us to court? That's extreme. It's justice, I responded, and I'm not dropping the case. Lydia, crimson with rage, glared at me. We won't let you tarnish our reputation. You're going to regret this. Is that a threat? I countered. Everything I've done is legal. Can you say the same? Enough, Ethan shouted. This is getting us nowhere. I fixed him with a steely gaze. You're right. It's clear where we all stand. Now, I suggest you leave. Elsie sneered. You may have gotten the upper hand now, but remember, the courts haven't decided anything yet. We'll see. I replied confidently. As they left, the tension in the room was palpable, but I stood my ground. They had come to intimidate, to make me doubt my course, but it had the opposite effect. Their visit only solidified my decision. There was no turning back now, and whatever the outcome, I was ready. The day of the court hearing arrived quicker than I anticipated. As I entered the building, my heels clicked sharply against the marble floor, echoing the resolute beat of my heart. There was a thrum of anticipation in the air, and I could feel eyes on me, but I remained focused, my gaze unwavering. Sitting across the room, Lydia, Elsie, and Ethan whispered among themselves, casting furtive glances in my direction. Ethan looked especially worn out, his earlier confidence replaced by clear anxiety. Lydia, on the other hand, wore a mask of defiance, while Elsie's face was set in a frown, her eyes hard and calculating. The room fell silent as the judge entered, taking her place at the bench. We are gathered here today to discuss the matter of financial fraud and theft, she began. Present your case. My lawyer stepped forward, presenting the evidence of the unauthorized transfers and Ethan's deception. The paper trail was undeniable, every detail meticulously recorded. The judge frequently glanced up from the documents, looking first at Ethan and then at me, Ethan's lawyer made a valiant attempt to argue that the money was gifted willingly, but the evidence against them was insurmountable. When Lydia was called to the stand, her arrogance was palpable. That money was for my son, she declared. It was only right that he should have it. But it wasn't yours to take, I replied calmly when it was my turn to speak. And it wasn't yours to keep, Lydia snapped, pointing a shaking finger at me. The judge interjected, this isn't about family dynamics. This is about the law, and the law is clear on this matter. Hours seemed to stretch on as the proceedings continued. When the final verdict was read, vindication surged through me. Ethan was ordered to return every cent he had taken, and additional punitive damages were awarded to me for the deceit and emotional trauma. After the hearing, 
as I stepped out into the crisp air, I felt lighter than I had in months. This was more than just a legal victory. It was my emancipation from the shackles of deception, disrespect, and manipulation. Ethan approached, his face pale. I'm sorry, he murmured, not meeting my eyes. I looked at him, really looked at him, and for a moment, I saw the man I had fallen in love with. But that image was quickly replaced by the reality of who he had become. It's too late for sorry, I replied. As I walked away, I felt a sense of finality. It was the end of a painful chapter in my life, but it was also the beginning of a new one, one where I was in control, where I was free. That evening, as I sat in my home, the silence was soothing. There were no more whispers, no more deceit, no more games. I had reclaimed my life, my dignity, and my peace. And as the sun set, casting a warm golden hue across the room, I knew that tomorrow would be a new day, full of promise and endless possibilities.